So the next part of the lab is creating a calibration curve. Basically what that calibration curve is, is it shows the relationship between concentration absorbance of a specific solution like copper nitrate. And so what we're going to do is we are going to measure the absorbance at a concentration of 0 0.05 molar, 0 0.10 molar, 0 0.20 molar, and then again at 0.4 molar. And so we are gonna measure those various concentrations and absorbance and it's gonna plot a graph for us. Now it makes sense that as the concentration increases, your absorbance should also increase. But first, you're gonna have to make some solutions. And so in my back stock room, all I have is 0.4 molar copper nitrate. And so I have 0.4 molar copper nitrate. I need to make solutions that are 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0.05 molar. And so we're going to have to do some dilution calculations from back at the beginning of this unit in order to do that. And so remember that in order to calculate dilutions, we do M1V1 equals M2V2. Or another way to say it is MCVC equals MDVD. Basically, we're gonna take the molarity and the volume of our concentrated solution and relate it to the molarity and volume of our diluted solution. So we will, be, we will be dissolving these down. And so I know that this is my concentrated molarity. I also know that for my first sample, I want this to be my diluted molarity. I'm gonna tell you that the volume that I want is to make about 10 milliliters of each. That way I have enough to rinse the cuvette. And so you're gonna go ahead and calculate what volume of this original sample you need to put into a graduated cylinder in order to dilute your sample for each. And then I'm gonna be running you through creating that calibration curve and figuring out how to use it. All right, so I did my calculations. I've measured out the amounts of my concentrated that I need to put within each solution. And then all I need to do now is add water up to the 10 milliliter mark and mix these, and I will have the concentrations that I need. And so I am going to go ahead and pour in my water, getting it up to the 10 milliliter mark to fully dilute. And then I wanna show you something kinda of neat that a lot of people forget to do, and that is, notice that, that each one of these samples has a darker bottom than it does on the top. What that tells me is that these samples need to be mixed. If you were to not mix these, and one way you can mix these is just by using the pipette. It's even better to use a glass stirring rod, but if I wasn't to mix these, I would have some problems with my sample because I'm probably not getting the full concentration that's required. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our calibration curves. So on my iPad, I'm gonna select the wavelength of 720 nanometers. So I'm gonna select the wavelength. I have to get it recording. I'm gonna select the wavelength of 720 nanometers in order to analyze my solution. And so the first thing it asks me to do is to calibrate. And so I am going to put some just blank water in here. It's, again, it's just like putting the Weibo on the scale to, so that all the light that passes through becomes like zero on the scale. And so I get my water in here and I place the blank cuvette in the device and I'm going to calibrate it, essentially hitting tear on my spectrophotometer. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a calibration curve. I am going to start with just water as a measurement because when it's only water, I should have an absorbance of zero um, because I'm setting this even to zero. And so let me move my phone, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit collect and hit keep. And my very first concentration that I'm recording has a zero absorbance and a zero concentration. 
Next, I'm going to take my next sample, which is the 0 0.05 molar. I'm going to rinse out my cuvette a couple of times, but I wanna make sure that I have enough to actually record my sample, um, which sometimes is a problem. I'm just gonna pour it in here and hopefully not spill too much. And so I am going to wipe off my cuvette again. Notice that I did not change anything. I did not hit stop. This time I'm going to hit keep. Notice that the absorbance is 0 0.351. And so I'm going to put that that is the absorbance for 0 0.05 concentration. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat that with my next concentration, which is 0.1. I'm going to rinse, I'm going to rinse, and then I am going to pour, and then I'm going to wipe all my potential fingerprints off of here, and I'm going to put it into my spectrophotometer. Notice I now have an absorbance of 0.425, oh, 0.965, and I'm going to hit keep, that is my 0.1 molar concentration. And then I'm going to repeat this with my 0.2 molar. So I rinse, I rinse, I pour. See, I've just done this for a while. This would take you guys a lot longer, I think. Maybe not. I place it in my spectrophotometer after I wipe and I get an absorbance that reads 1.799. Whoa, that's super high. I'm gonna hit keep, that is my 0.2 molar. And then the very last one that I am going to do is my 0.4 molar. I'm gonna get it right out of the stock bottle because I didn't have to dilute it. I rinse, rinse, I fill, I put it, oh, I gotta wipe it. I wipe, I put it in here. I wait for it to read the absorbance, I hit keep. And that is my 0.4 molar. So I noticed right off the bat that I don't have exactly a straight line. Notice that that last peak is a little bit lower than it should be. I would expect the absorbance to be slightly higher for that last peak, but we can still use this data the way it is. I'm gonna hit stop. Now, one of the things that could happen, if you notice the first three points are in a pretty straight line, that 0.4 reading seems just a little bit low. It could be an error on the behalf of this actual device, or it could be that my copper, con my copper nitrate concentration is just slightly lower than it should have been. But the most likely reason is that I did not Put, that I put slightly too much of the original stock when I was measuring out my solution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a linear regression and I'm going to apply a curve fit, a linear curve fit, and that is going to give me a line equation that I'm gonna show you right now how to use in order to analyze our sample. So one of the biggest things is taking this linear regression that we got on the iPad and figuring out what it means in terms of Beer's Law. And so we're gonna talk about Beer's Law here for just a moment. It always shows up on the AP exam. Remember that we use it to analyze mixtures or solutions that have color. And so here, Beer's Law is A equals A, B, C. Notice it looks a little bit like in a line equation, y equals mx, if we don't include b. The reason why we don't include plus b is that when the concentration is zero, the absorbance should also be zero. So we really don't have to worry about b. So how this works is a equals a, b, c. Big A is absorbance. C is concentration. And then A, B, I believe on your new formula sheet, it's actually a symbol that looks like this. This is M, the slope of the line. So when we analyzed our line earlier, we got 5.834X. So our slope was 5.834. And so our slope in this case was 5.834, which means that our sigma, and B is 5.834.
I do need to teach you what those means. They did show up on the AP exam a few years ago. And so this guy right here is called molar absorptivity. It's basically a measure of how well that specific substance absorbs light. Just how well does it absorb light? And then B is the path length in centimeters. It is essentially the length of the cuvette in centimeters. And so really, if you make the cuvette longer, your absorbance is gonna increase because that light's gonna have to pass through more stuff. Now, the biggest thing the AP wants you to do with this is they want you to analyze the unknown solution. And so here we have a relationship between Y, which we now think of as absorbance, and X, which is concentration. And so we're gonna take our BB and I'm gonna show you how to use this equation to analyze your mixture.